Hey there Dev Squad Vertus here and welcome back to my Mech Combat tutorial series. Within today's video, we are going to be showing you how you can get your turret spider bot to shoot and damage the player. At the same time, it's also going to be following the player. So having said all of that, what we're going to be doing is going over step by step how we can complete this entire process. So we're going to start off by setting up a simple projectile which is going to be spawned from the turrets of this spider. Then we're going to move on to the code within the spider and then lastly we're going to be doing a little bit of material work and a little bit more code to get the projectile to actually damage the character as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive straight into it. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is setting up the projectile which is going to be coming out of our spider bot. So what we're going to do is we are going to go to our mech combat folder we're going to go to blueprints and in here we are going to right click and create a new blueprint class and we are going to be using the type actor. With this we are going to give this the name projectile and then once you've done that what you want to do is open this up. Once you've got this open we are going to be setting up a static mesh which is going to give us the physical appearance of this projectile. So go ahead and add a static mesh component in the top left hand corner and then once you've done this we are going to be giving it the name projectile mesh. Once we've done this on the right hand side in the details panel we are going to set the mesh to cone and we are going to look for shape underscore cone. Now at the moment this projectile is a little bit too big so we're going to set this to 0 0.25, 0 0.25 and 0 0.25 on the x, y and z. And with us having done that now, if we drag it into the scene, you can see this is going to be a correct size for a projectile that's going to come out of those turrets. Opening this projectile back up, what we're going to do is a couple of things. Go back into the viewport, select our projectile, and then what we're going to be doing is with this, we are going to be simply rotating it 90 degrees so it follows the y axis as that is the direction it's going to be traveling in. So that is our projectile appearance set up for now. What we now need to move on to is setting up some of the settings so that it's going to work with our damage base system. So having said that, we're going to have to do a couple of things. First things first, simulation generates hit events, make sure that is checked. And then also for the collision, you want to make sure this is set to overlap all as it's going to allow us to create our overlap event for when this actually damages and hits the player. So that's all good. The next step is to actually give it some movement to make it move through our game level. And we're going to be doing this by adding in a component with the name projectile movement. And then within this projectile movement component, we're going to be doing a couple of things. So this is going to allow us to change the velocity and also the speed on initially and also the max speed of this projectile. So let's go ahead and do just that. So what we're going to be doing is with this, we are going to set the velocity on the Y axis, which is the direction it's traveling in to 5000. Once we've done this, up at the top, we are going to set the initial speed to 3000. Once you've done this, your max speed is also going to be 3000. By having the initial and the max exactly the same, that is going to give us a constant speed for our projectile. And if I was to go ahead and hit simulate, you can see our projectile is going to move through the world at a nice, fairly decent speed. So. That is our projectile set up in the way that we want it to. What we need to do now is move on to coding our spider bot to move and shoot those projectiles out of it. Now before we do that, what we need to do is set up two sockets on the end of the barrels which is going to tell the engine where those projectiles are going to be spawned in. So having said that, you want to go to mech combat, meshes, and then you want to go to AI spider turret and then open up your skeletal mesh for this turret and head over to the skeleton tab. Once you've done this, what you want to do is select your barrels up in the skeleton tree in the top left and from barrel L, what you want to do is add a socket 
And then with this socket, we're going to right click it and rename it to left. And then with barrel underscore R, do the same thing, add the socket. And then with this, what we're going to do is rename this to right. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and close it and move into the spider blueprint to start bringing this to life with a little bit of code. So now we've done that, what we're going to do is move over to our spider blueprint. So go to third person BP blueprints and then open up your spider turret. What we're going to do is start off by deleting all of the code here that we've got at the moment, as that is from our previous bot that we've got, which is the exploding one. We're not going to need this. We're going to be writing some custom code. So having said that, what we're going to be doing is starting off with the code for when this AI actually sees the player. So on C pawn for the pawn, we're going to do cast to third person character. If this AI can see the character, what we're going to do is get it to move towards it. And we're going to be doing this using the AI move to function. So right click and search for AI move to. And what you should have is something that looks like this. You want to hook this up to the execution pin. And then as third person character, you want to set that to the target actor. So this is where your AI is going to move to. For the pawn, we're going to drag out from there and we are going to type in self to get a reference to self. And what this is essentially going to do now is when it sees the player, it is going to follow the player. And what we're going to be doing on success is simply just looping this so it runs again. Now, normally we can't just hook the same node into itself. So what we're going to do is add a delay of about 0.5 seconds. And then once that's completed, it's going to run that again. So if we go ahead and compile our code, you can see exactly what this looks like. So what we're going to do is delete our explosive bot, hit play, and then jump into the scene. By default, you can see the spider is going to be standing still exactly where it is, but once it sees the player, it is going to follow the player and that. If I stop and I move away, he is just going to keep on following us wherever that you go. So that is our follow code setup. So what we need to do now is actually tell the engine that that needs to start spawning in those projectiles to try and shoot the player. So what we're going to be doing is opening this up again and then once it starts moving to the location of this player or just before we are going to set shooting to true. And by setting shooting to true, what this is also going to do is get it to play the shooting animation. So what you can see here now is you have got a AI that is going to be playing the shooting animation when it's following it because it can see it. So it's going to be shooting. So let's take a closer look. So if you look at those muzzles, they are moving backwards and forwards. It may not be too clear to see, but it is definitely happening there. So that bit is all good. So what we're going to do now is move on to getting it to actually spawn in those projectiles. The way that we're going to do this is by running some code, which is just going to be looping over and over and over again from begin play to check to see whether or not this AI is shooting. And if it is shooting, then it's just going to keep on spawning in these projectiles. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a branch check to see whether or not this can actually see the player or is it shooting? So the condition is going to be shooting. And if this is true, this is where we're going to be making the magic happen. So if shooting is true, what we're going to be doing is spawning an actor from class. And we're going to be using two of these, one for the left barrel, one for the right barrel. So the class is going to be the projectile that we have just created. And you want to set that for both of these as you're going to be having the same projectile that's going to come out of it. Once we've done this, what we've now got to set is our spawn transform. So the spawn transform is essentially the location the, and the rotation and the scale of this projectile. And we're going to be getting this from the socket. So what we're going to do for spawn transform is 
get socket transform and this is actually going to be coming from the skeletal mesh which actually contains the two sockets that we just created those being left and right which come from the barrels so once we've done this for the in socket name we're going to have one which is set to left and then if we go ahead and copy this again and hook this up to spawn transform and set this one to right this is going to spawn that projectile from those two sockets make sure you join up the execution pins just like that as well and what we're going to be doing with this now is essentially just looping this over and over again now for us to create this loop what we're going to be doing is adding in a delay and then after this delay what we're going to be doing is checking to see whether or not they're still shooting so from completed you want to drag that back to shooting so once we've run this delay, we are going to be able to go all the way back to the start and check to see if it's still shooting. Now this delay here is going to be very important. This is essentially going to serve as the turret fire rate. So how often is it going to be able to run this code? So having said that, what we're going to be doing is simply doing delay duration 0.4 and I think that's a reasonable speed you can always play test this and check this later now as for the false with shooting what we're going to be doing with this is simply running a delay of a couple of seconds which is going to be about four seconds and then we're just going to start this over again so even if it isn't shooting it's still going to loop this code over and over again to check to see if it is is shooting and if it is shooting then it's going to do the actions for that so if we go ahead and hit compile on this we should have no errors and if we jump into our game hit possess what we should have is our turret shooting projectiles towards the player now what you will notice is the direction at the moment for these is a little bit off it's shooting them straight into the ground so what we're going to have to do is go into the sockets and just adjust this so it's coming out in the right direction so having said that let's do just that so what we're going to do is go to our meshes we're going to go to spider turret and then with these two sockets that we've got here if we go into our skeleton at the moment they are over here all we're going to be doing is rotating them 90 degrees this way and you want to make sure you're doing the same thing for both left and right so you are rotating those minus 90 degrees and then we're going to jump into our game again press play and then run in front of this and now what you're going to be able to see is these are coming out at the player in the right direction so that is our projectiles all set up and coming out of that enemy that we've got there what you'll also notice is there's a little bit of dip on those so they won't just go forever they've got a very limited range so with our projectiles all being set up what we can do now is move on to the last two stages those two last stages is going to be setting up damage from those projectiles so it's actually going to take away the player's health and then we're also going to set up a material so this looks a little bit more like a projectile so we're going to start with the easiest one first that being the material for this and this is just going to glow red so what we're going to do is in our blueprints folder where we've actually got this projectile we're just going to create a new material with the name projectile underscore mat then what we're going to do is go ahead and open this up and in here we are simply going to add in a constant free vector into the emissive and this is going to give us the red glow that we're after if we go to the details panel with this constant free vector selected go to red and we are going to set this to 15 and what you're going to notice now is once it finishes compiling this is going to have a bright red glow as you can see here we're going to hit apply and then we are going to assign this to the material of that projectile that we've got so having said that go ahead and close this up and then open up our projectile blueprint select the projectile mesh and then for the material you want to set this to 
projectile projectile underscore mat and then give it a couple of seconds to compile that hit play and let's take a look at this now so right in front of our turret and you can see even in the light those projectiles are going to be a little bit clearer if i go in the dark we can see them they're very visible and they now look like a projectile and it also matches the body of the spider as well which i think is really cool so moving on the last step so our ai is going to shoot the player but it's not going to damage it when it hits and that's what we need to set up we're going to be doing all of this inside of the projectile blueprint and we're going to be using an overlap based system to accomplish this so what we're going to do is with our projectile mesh and if we scroll down on component begin overlap we are going to be writing a little bit of code the other actor that it's going to be overlapping with is going to be our third person character so having said that cast to that third person character and simply what we're going to do is set our health and with this set health what we're going to do is get the original value and just take away a little bit of health from that so what we're going to do is get health and then we are going to do float minus float and with this hook this up into there and then for your b we are going to be setting this to 0 0.05 this is the amount of damage it's going to do each hit which is five percent now bear in mind in each shot there is two of these projectiles so it's actually going to be doing 10 percent damage so that is going to damage the player now what we need to do from here is make it look like it's hit the player so the player can see that and we're going to be doing this by spawning an emitter at the location the emitter template is going to be the default explosion you can use any particle system that you may have for your project for the location rotation and scale we are going to be getting this from the projectile so what we're going to be doing is get actor location the target is going to be self and we are going to hook it up into there so this is going to play the particle at the hit location because the code is going to go off and it's going to get the location of it at that very time so with us having done that now what we're going to do after this is simply destroy the actor and this is going to make our projectile invisible it's going to get it from our get it's going to get rid of it from the game once it served its purpose so go ahead and hit play hit possess and then if we run in front of this you can see now when those projectiles hit our body it is going to blow up on the hit location and it's also going to damage us what you're going to notice at the moment as well is you currently have no system in place for actually killing this player that is something that we're going to be covering later on in the series but for now that is our spider bot following us shooting us and damaging us enjoy the rest of your day guys but for now that is everything for this video thanks again stay awesome keep creating your boy vertus signing out this video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.